So here's what I'm thinking. There's a lot of fragrance lines out there. And by fragrance line, I mean like a group of fragrances. So for example, La Nuit de Lome, the line. There's La Nuit de Lome, La Nuit de Lome Eau de Parfum, La Nuit de Lome L'Intense, Le Parfum, and so on. That's kind of a fragrance line, at least that's what I would consider a fragrance line to be. And so for this video, I sat down and I thought of seven fragrance lines that I think every guy should own. Now, this may sound really easy, like it may sound like a no-brainer, but when you think about it and you take a look at all the fragrance lines out there, a lot of them have a ton of fragrances. So that La Nuit de Lome example there it did not make it in this video because there are tons and tons of La Nuit de Lome flankers, at least a good amount, and same with the Lome line. And I think it's a little bit of an unfair ask to say that, oh, you should own all of those. I really don't think you necessarily need to. And I think there are a few in those lines that aren't worth owning. Uh, so for this video, the, the fragrance lines here are gonna be a little bit smaller, a little bit easier to dive into. It's easier and more affordable to own all of them because there aren't tons and tons. You know, it's not a Zaro Chrome or a, you know, a Calvin Klein CK1 line, which has a bunch. Lines that are you know easy to dive into and there, there isn't any overlap or redundancy between them. So all designers here, gonna be some affordable, some more expensive, but very easy to get into. And uh, you know, I guess there are maybe a couple that have a lot of fragrances, some are discontinued, and I'll kind of specify on which ones I think you for sure should own. But again, a good amount of these here, you could be good with picking them all up. First up, we have the Givenchy Gentleman line. So everything from the Eau de Toilette to the Eau de Parfum, to the new EDP Boise and the new EDP or EDT Intense rather, uh, there and everything in between, I think they all are worth owning. There's no overlap. You know, each fragrance can be used for a different situation. You have Gentleman Eau de Toilette 2017 here, has a nice pear note, uh, fruity freshness up top. Uh, very bright, great for a spring, early summer day. It's a beauty of a scent that is overlooked, believe it or not, at least in my opinion. And then the EDP, you could layer over top of that one when the evening time comes around. Then you have a nice evening out date fragrance. And everything else from uh, Gentleman Cologne being a really good hot summer day scent uh, to Gentleman EDP Boise, uh, you know, a nice entry level into the line that's a little bit sweeter. Uh, they cover all of the bases here. For the most part on discounters, they aren't too terribly expensive if you can get them in stock in a healthy market. Right now, prices are all over the place. These will all be linked down below, so you can get them at a discount. So this next line is going to be the Bentley for Men fragrance line right here. Okay, starting off with the original Eau de Toilette. I really do think that uh, across the line, across the board, it, it, very well versed, okay? Because you have this one giving off a boozy sweetness. It's got rum, uh, bay leaf. There's a cinnamon in here. It smells fantastic. Uh, you guys know where I stand with the Bentley for men's, both this and the Intense. The Intense also I do think is worth owning. Now, you know, with this one, you can pick and choose a little bit. If you just don't like Bentley for Men Intense or even this one, I do think the rest of the line is worth looking into. So for everything to Silver Lake right here, kind of an Aqua de Jo inspired scent, uh, all the way over to Bentley for Men Absolute, dry, smoky woods, great performance, high quality. Uh, to Bentley for Men Black Edition, that one's very nice as well, kind of violet leaf ozonic. And then uh, there's Bentley for Men Azure which is probably my least favorite out of the entire line, but it's still good and it's still a lot better than a lot of other fragrances in this price range, which is on the affordable side, uh, typically 30, 40 bucks for these generally. I think Silver Lake is still a little bit more expensive. It's a little bit newer, um, but still maybe 60 bucks or so. So all around, it's an affordable line with great quality across the board, great performance across the board, and a little bit of everything for everybody from summer to winter to daring to easy to get into to an evening out scent to you know daytime scent. It pretty much has all of its bases covered and is a great kind of introduction into the higher quality uh, you know, fragrance world without actually spending a high quality price tag. Next up, of course, we have the Bulgari Man line. Been talking about this one a good amount lately. This is the Eau de Toilette where it all started and I encourage you to not sleep on this one. Fantastic stuff. Love just the original. It's got a honey sweetness, nice freshness as well. There's a little bit of a 
kind of woody, mature undertone, kind of gives it more of a throwback feel almost. While you may look at this and think that, oh, it's Bulgari Man EDT, it's the, the first one, it may be basic, it may be boring, it's actually not. It, it's very well done, very pleasant. Love that musky woodiness that you kind of get after the opening. I can smell it in the air. It does give it a mature feeling, like I said, so uh, this would be a good one here. Another one, of course, just kind of grabbing at random, Glacial Essence. Uh, going to be the, the easiest to wear out of all of them, I would say, or at least the most mass pleasing and the most kind of modern and trendy. You know, it's not quite blue fragrance territory, but it kind of is in a way, you know, it's kind of almost their take on a blue fragrance with a different twist. Very strong, clear wood note in here. Kind of gives off a watery woodiness. Smells great. Another one at random here, uh, Bulgari Man Extreme. Also going to be very wearable. This one's got like cactus juice. It's got bergamot, citrus, all of that stuff. Another one that smells great. Uh, what else do we got here? Um, Bulgari Man Black Cologne would be my least favorite out of all of them. So if you wanted to kind of cheat and not quite get all of them, but almost, you could probably exclude this one and get Bulgari Man in Black, uh, get Wood Neroli, Wood Essence, of course, this one and everything else. Uh, but I do think the whole line is very well versed. I've done a buying guide. You can watch that and I say the same thing. That'll kind of help give you an idea of where to start also if you're a little bit overwhelmed. Um, but I think there's a little bit of everything for everybody. And again, it's got all of your seasons and all of your bases covered. I think it's a great, great line. And for the most part, it's affordable. $60 range on average. Okay, let's go over to an expensive designer line now. This is going to be the House of Chanel, the line of Chanel Allure Ohm. So here's Chanel Allure Ohm, of course, right? Um, I love the original here. Uh, you know, Chanel Allure Ohm Sport Extreme, Allure Ohm Edition Blanche, Allure Ohm Sport, they all got uh, a bunch of hype and, and that kind of diverted the attention to those. It's easy to forget about the OG, but I encourage you to not forget about the OG. Man, smells great. Fresh, kind of creamy, a little bit powdery and sweet in a way. It is Chanel Allure Ohm. This is the foundation of all of the flankers that you love, like Allure Ohm Sport Extreme. This is an absolute must own, a must have. Chanel Allure Ohm Sport, also very nice. That one is great for the hot summer day. Allure Ohm Sport Extreme is great for that kind of warm summer evening when you're maybe going out on the town, date, party, whatever, kind of a fun, playful one, very sexy, great compliment getter. That's what this one's for. You go over to Edition Blanche. That will probably please the uh, enthusiast a little bit more because it has that lemon pop, makes it a bit of a different twist. That one's fantastic. And of course, the original here, and I think that's it. Oh, Allure Ohm Sport Cologne. Uh, smells like Dior Ohm Cologne. So that would be a really good one for the hottest of hot summer days if all you want citrus. So literally everything you could dream up, they kind of have within this line. The only thing that they really don't have in this line is like a super sweet, strong winter version, which is okay. I mean, realistically, all of these are so versatile that you could wear them. And Allure Ohm Sport Extreme here would probably be my choice for winter time out of the whole line. So, you know, I'm talking about Chanel. I will go ahead and say this right off the bat. Blue to Chanel, surprisingly, didn't make it in here. And here's why. Uh, I don't think it's necessary to own all three of the Blue to Chanel's. I just don't, okay? Um, they all do add something new, but I don't think you need all of them. Unless you're a big fan, you're a big enthusiast of Blue to Chanel. I have all of them. I'm glad that I do. I love the Parfum. I probably wear that one the most. Next up will be the EDP. I wear that one a lot, but on warm days, I will break out the EDT. So I do get use out of all of them. I also have a channel where I talk about all of them. So, the, you know, they're justified in that way. But for just the consumer, you don't need all of them. I would say pick your favorite, whether it's the EDT, the EDP, or the Parfum. Pick one. Uh, with the Chanel Allure Ohms, there is more variety between them. So that's why I excluded Blue to Chanel. But we do have a blue fragrance line in here, and it's not Sauvage either. Uh, I actually went with YSLY. So everything from the Eau de Toilette to the newest Parfum and everything else in between. So the EDP, Live, and Eau Fresh, all of them are top-notch. The quality on each and every one of these is amazing. They don't miss a beat. Um, Eau Fresh is going to be kind of this frosted, you know, super hot weather appropriate scent. 
kind of a ginger pop in there, a little bit minty green. Uh, it smells amazing. I love Eau Fresh. I wish I would wear it more in the summertime. It is one that's easy for me to forget about. Um, and then there's the newest Parfum, which plays on this uh, EDT DNA and more specifically the EDP DNA heavily but it increases the, the concentration, of course. It wears like a true parfum. It's a bit more rich. It's a bit more interesting to me and probably to a lot of uh, collectors. That one's top notch. You've got the EDP, which is still a great choice in this day and age, still a great performer, very wearable. And I do think it's not too redundant to own the EDP and the Parfum because there still are those differences there. And finally, Live, which is going to be more of a playful approach on the DNA even more so, kind of has bits and pieces of like a little bit of an Invicta smell buried in there, just a tiny bit. Um, and, and it's also, to be fair, not really looking the best for that one. This is something I've speculated on a little bit on my community tab. It's disappeared from all retailers. It's disappeared from YSL Beauty, the official website for the United States, that is. Uh, and that's never a good sign. I'm not saying for sure of anything, but I'm just saying that it is starting to get a little bit harder to find. Discounters do have this one currently, but who knows? So yeah, the whole line, fantastic stuff here. And I do think they all are worth owning. And of course, Prada Luna Rosa, the line. So everything from the original to... Prada Luna Rosa Black, which has been out of stock and harder to get lately, but you know, it, it'll show up at some point. All the way over to Carbon to Prada Luna Rosa Sport, right? All of them are amazing. Let's let's try this concoction. Okay, how does that smell? You know what? It actually smells great. Get the tonka bean overwhelming powderiness from this one, as I now have spray all over it doesn't look the best and then you get just kind of the uh clean freshness and also the lavender powderiness from the original as well that's completely pointless but you know you could layer them i guess if you wanted to right uh so yeah the whole line is worth owning uh you know pricing is all over the map a prada luna rosa black will be the most expensive on average even at discounters you're looking at 70 80 uh for 100 mil so not cheap uh but you could go for um i guess the original and Sport, which will be a bit more affordable. Even Carbon used to be $50 on the dot. Now it's up to 60, 70 for 100 mil. Prices are just up on everything. But the point is, for the price, actually, they are really good. And what I was gonna say was, at this price point, they're still worth getting. Even if they're a bit more expensive, uh, I think it's worth it. And last up for this one here, the last fragrance line that I think you need to own for sure, it's the Dior Ohm line. So this example is Dior Homme 2020, the cashmere uh, woody one, right? Cashmere and Isui Super, all of that stuff. Um, you, I think Dior Homme original, definitely worth owning if you can find it here. It's been harder to get, but that'll change in time, hopefully. Uh, so everything from that to Dior Homme Intense to Dior Homme Parfum, if you can get it. Just recently came in stock on my community tab. Um, and then Dior Homme Cologne, fantastic. Now there are a few discontinued ones, um, Prada, or not Prada, sorry, Dior Homme O, uh, which kind of smells like Prada Lome. Um, that one's discontinued at one point was a must own, now obviously is not. Uh, but yeah, you know, just the Dior Homme line, man. Amazing, amazing stuff in here. Love it. Dior Homme Intense, one of my favorite designers of all time. Definitely worth owning. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for me. That is seven designer fragrance lines that, in my opinion, every guy should own. I mean, these are imperative. They all offer something different. There isn't a bunch of repetitive redundancy within the lines. you got a little bit of everything for everybody. Let me know down below what are some lines that I missed, uh, what are some of your favorite designer fragrance lines, or niche for that matter. And I remember I will link these all down below to discounters as well, so you can pick them up at a price below retail. That's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.